Yeah, today is May 6th, and today's quote is entitled, Self-Talk. Be careful how you are talking to yourself, because you are listening. The mind is uh, it's amazing. It, it thinks of so many things that we really, really wouldn't want to think of if we didn't have to, right? Isn't that interesting? Our mind thinks of things that, of our own accord, we wouldn't want to think. Kind of funny, right? Anyway, as we all know, the problem with the mind is that it's hard to neglect. I mean, you could try to neglect it, and we should neglect it when it's telling us something which is not helpful. But before we neglect it, we hear it, so we hear what we have to neglect, right? So when we say neglect the mind, we mean we have to neglect it when it's telling us you can be happy without Krishna, but it's telling us that, right? So the reality is we have to hear what we put in the mind, what's there, we hear it. And um, that's why we said in this quote, be careful what you think. What do we say? Be careful how you're talking to yourself because you're listening. So, you know, if you like we were saying yesterday, if you have this desire to be Krishna conscious, then you're telling yourself, I want to be Krishna conscious, or I can be Krishna conscious, or I'm going to make every effort to be Krishna conscious. That's what you're telling yourself. That's good. Or you could be telling yourself, I'll never be Krishna conscious. I'm not capable, I'm not qualified, I'm not smart enough, I'm not this enough or that enough. And so as you tell yourself that, you tend to believe that because that's the way the mind works. We tend to believe everything we think, and that's why I say don't believe everything you think. Because everything you think is not necessarily what you want to think. So, thoughts are very powerful, they have extremely powerful effect on us, right? Because we're listening. <clears throat> and because we're listening, why not put some thoughts which will support our Krishna consciousness? Why not put thoughts in there that will support the challenges we face? Why not put thoughts in there that will help us develop the qualities that we need to be Krishna conscious? Because the nature of the mind is when you put thoughts in it, it responds to those thoughts. It doesn't analyze, is this thought true? So if you put a thought in your mind that's not true, like, I'm stupid. You're not stupid, but if you think you're stupid, you put that thought in. Because what happens, you'll act like a stupid person. Because once that thought is in the mind, the mind doesn't analyze, is this true or not? It doesn't go and look up your IQ. The mind just responds with the programming you put in, put in, which in this case would be, I'm stupid, or I can't be Krishna conscious, or I can't chant good rounds, or I can't get along with devotees, or I can't this, or I can't that. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you just carry it out. <clears throat> okay, that's not good, but when you do that in a positive way, I can be Krishna conscious, I can chant good rounds, I can have good relationships, I can serve purely, I can do something that will help my Krishna consciousness, that your mind says, okay, you can, and you do it. So that's the, it's good to understand the nature of the mind and the power of it, and how the mind doesn't really have this discriminatory power, it accepts what, how we program it. So... We all know from experience we do, we do things really, really difficult things are not so difficult when we have confidence. And easy things are pretty difficult when we're not confident. And so, obviously, having some degree of confidence is very helpful. I can be Krishna conscious. I can please my spiritual master. Without that confidence, we don't try. And that's really, really a shame if we don't try. So, you're listening to whatever you think, if you tell yourself you're listening to and being influenced by, so might as well tell yourself something that supports your goals. Hare Krishna.